When a gas tank is hit by a bullet, or when a car is lit on fire, the explosion usually looks something like this. Now we know that this is probably an exaggeration, that they have it loaded with explosives to be cool. But do gas tanks even explode? Welcome to Real Chemistry. In this episode, we're going to ask the question, do gas tanks explode? And we're going to watch some cool videos that show us if this is the case. So here's the deal. Gas tanks don't explode. They don't. They burn, but they don't explode. Why is that? Well, here's the chemical reaction responsible for the burning of gas. That CaH18 is a molecule called octane, which makes up a part of gas. Gas turns out to be a complicated mixture of different molecules like this, but the same basic process happens for all of them. You take this carbon and hydrogen and you mix it with oxygen. When those two chemicals hit each other, that's why there's that plus sign between them. This is a chemical reaction where those are colliding. Then we go to the other side, the products, and that's what that arrow tells us. After we combine this gasoline and oxygen, we get out CO2 and water. And of course, we also get out a lot of energy. But the key is, is that in order for this reaction to happen, gasoline and oxygen have to mix. They have to hit each other. And so if you think about your typical gas tank, it's filled with gas on the bottom, and it's filled with air on the top. And the chemical reaction can only happen where they meet. So right at that line, that interface between air and gasoline, that's where we can have the burning reaction. So that just can't burn fast enough, it turns out, to produce an explosion. Gasoline actually contains an enormous amount of energy, so there's plenty of energy there, but it's released too slowly. This same process keeps these lucky fools from dying <laughs> when they light a squirt gun full of gasoline on fire. Oh, Put it out! Don't break it up! Yeah, just get him to blow up. Dude. No, it's not. Gas doesn't blow up. As you can see, the guy, the gun just burns. It doesn't explode because, as the wise young gentleman informs us, gas doesn't blow up. And why doesn't gas blow up? Because the oxygen has to meet the gasoline in order to release the energy. So gasoline is good at releasing energy slowly, relatively speaking, but not good at releasing it very fast. What does explode? Well, TNT explodes. Dynamite. Why does that happen? Well, here's the chemical reaction that represents the explosion of TNT. You can see there that on the reactant side, on the left side of the arrow, we actually just have one reactant. That means it doesn't have to combine with anything. It just falls apart. This is what's called a decomposition reaction. It's one molecule that falls apart into others. And since that molecule just falls apart, if I have a stick of dynamite, the entirety of the thing through the whole stick can explode almost at the same time. As soon as it has enough energy, they all fall apart and they all release their energy simultaneously. So what makes TNT explode while gas just burns is not how much energy is there, but how quickly it's released. And TNT can release it all at once. In fact, it turns out that gasoline has way, way, way more energy than TNT. Here are three regular everyday objects, gasoline, cookies, and TNT. And what we see here is how much energy they have per 100 grams. So for TNT, you can see just 65 calories per 100 grams. Now, here, you might be surprised by my use of the unit calorie. You might be thinking, we're talking about science energy. But it turns out science energy and food calories are the same thing. They're just a way to measure how much work something can do. And TNT can't do very much. So if you're on a diet, try TNT. Okay, don't really, you'll explode. That's bad. However, we can see that gasoline, for that same 100 grams, has 1,000 calories. Well over 10 times as much energy as TNT. Chocolate chip cookies, or cookies in general, are somewhere in between. For a 100 gram cookie, you're looking at 500 calories. Now this is a big mega cookie. If you made little home cooked cookies, it might be about five or six of those guys. So this is a big cookie, 500 calories. But look at that, that's kind of weird, right? Cookies have more energy than TNT by almost a factor of 10? This really drives home the difference between power and energy. Energy is what we're measuring here in calories, how much 
is how much total energy is stored in these substances. Power takes into account how quickly it's released. So if something's high power, it means that it uses a lot of energy quickly, right? Think of a sports car. It's high power. It has a lot of horsepower because it can burn your gasoline really fast, all right? On the other hand, think of your Prius. It's relatively low power. It doesn't burn that much gasoline per unit time. It's also more efficient. That's another issue. The point is power is about how quickly you're releasing energy. So TNT exploding has a really, really high power. TNT is, is an enormous amount of power. It turns out that gasoline, though it has higher energy, when you burn it, is a lower power chemical reaction. And that's good, because if we packed our car with TNT and tried to explode it to run the car, bad things might happen, like a car might explode, like it does in the movies, which are probably, frankly, packed with TNT. So this highlights something interesting. Gasoline and cookies, because of their high storage of energy, actually are really good sources of energy, sources of fuel. So your cookie, right, it's high in calories. That means you can eat it and you can go run five miles. It takes five miles to burn off that 500 calorie cookie, which is ridiculous. Gasoline, similarly, that same 100 grams, right, gives you a thousand calories of energy. And it turns out that our bodies and cars actually use these energies in a similar way. Cars combine gasoline with oxygen, like we saw, and they use those small explosions to drive forward an internal combustion engine that makes the car go. Here's how things look inside a four-stroke engine. While moving down, the piston sucks a mixture of petrol and air into the cylinder and then compresses it as it moves back up. A spark ignites the explosive gas and drives the piston down again. This is the power cycle. Well, it turns out that our bodies do very much the same thing. They take the sugar from the cookies and they react it with oxygen. They do that in the mitochondria. It's like the powerhouse of the cell and it produces energy from that. Mitochondria are the power plants of almost all living things with complex cell structures, including animals, plants, and human beings. They provide energy for a cell to move, divide, and do all the things it needs to do to function properly. Here's the reaction that actually takes place in your mitochondria. Your cookies are eventually converted into this sugar, C6H12O6. That sugar, called glucose, is burned. It's combined with oxygen to make CO2 and water. That looks really similar to our chemical reaction for gasoline, which combines C8H18 with oxygen and again makes CO2 and water. Both reactions are combustion reactions, basically burning something by combining them with oxygen. This means that basically your mitochondria is an internal combustion engine. You know, when I was a kid, I often wondered why we were warm-blooded. Don't worry, this is related. Stick with me. I was like, what makes us warm-blooded and snakes cold-blooded? There must be some sort of like heater organ. Like which organ is my heater? And I tried to Google it and like the hypothalamus, it said, regulates body temperature. That's true, but it's not a heater. In fact, the reason that we're warm and snakes are cold is because we run more combustion reactions in our body. We burn more sugar and every cell in our body does that all the time. And our body carefully regulates how much of that is burnt. Doesn't cook it at too high of a power, right? so that we don't get too hot. That's what keeps us at 98 degrees. Similar to the car that gets warm when it runs combustion reactions, right? You have that temperature indicator and it has this nice zone it likes to run in. We're the same way. So, gas tanks don't explode. Gas and cookies make great fuels because they store a lot of energy, but you can't release that energy as quickly as you might like. 